Once again, boys and girls and children of all ages, you're now tuned in to the Prince of Investment coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via the beautiful city and state of Honolulu, Hawaii. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time. So let's jump straight into it. Woo! Investing in this very uncertain time. Tell me about it. A lot of things are going on right now in the market, not even the market, but in the world. You know, one day we have a pandemic going on. The next day we have civil unrest going on. You know, we have all type. It's like 2020. I don't know. I was definitely expecting much more and much better out of 2020. But it's definitely been a trying time for the economy. And we're halfway through the year. I can't believe we have blazed halfway through the year in these uncertain times. So not first that we get hit with a pandemic that pretty much we had to take our own economy off the tracks. Then secondly, we walked straight into the last week or two riots all over the country, followed by a presidential election, followed by unemployment being at an all-time high, companies are closing down, businesses are filing for bankruptcy, and you're wondering, man. What is going on? But well, slowly, guess what's been happening? What's been happening slowly, ladies and gentlemen, the market has slowly been rebounding. Is it really rebounding? Is it really real? What's going on, Prince? I'm looking to invest. What should I invest in? Should I stay on the sideline? Should I put my money in now? What should I do? How do I look at everything? Some people are saying, Prince, I don't know what to do. So guess what I'm doing? I'm doing nothing. You know, I'm just waiting, right? Do you have some people saying, hey, you know what? I want to buy, I think it's a great opportunity. Now, with all that being said, as we look at the world of finances and investing, today's topic, we're going to go through five categories, five categories of what to follow in uncertain times and how to invest in uncertain times. And I want to remind you guys and girls, this is some, uh, this is just only my opinion and backed up with some facts, some facts, and then some of my opinion to kind of give you something to make you think. I'm just here to make you think and look at things in a different way. First of all, I want to go to Warren Buffett's uh, recent Berkshire Hathaway meeting where he said, never bet against America. Prince, why are you talking about never bet against America? Because he said that, hey, this country has been through a lot of dark times. We've had civil wars. We had revolutions. We even had the White House burn in the War of 1812. We even had Great Depressions, market booms, market bust. Uh, we had 9-11 um, domestic terrorist attacks from 9-11. We have seen a lot. Slavery to, uh, we had, uh, we had uh, slavery to everything. I just can't name, you know, all the history lessons. But pretty much that's one of the things that he hit inside of his uh, speech. And as he spoke through his speech, he spoke about we went through all these dark times. We had Republicans. We had Democrats. We had world wars. We had all this stuff going on. But guess what? America has some type of magic to make it through, and it still does have that magic. So he said, with all that's going on, even in the darkest hour, we're still going to win. So a winner, a winner has a winning mentality, and they think about how they're going to win. A loser is trying to figure if they're going to win. So first of all, let's put on your winning hat, and let's jump into these five things. First thing, number one, something I tell you guys and girls, why is the market moving? Why is the market moving? The market is moving due to money flowing in. Some people are saying, Prince, I think that you are just, uh, people are way too optimistic. People have the fear of messing out. This is why the market is going up. Eh, a bunch of people sitting at home with stimulus checks. I don't think that's enough to move the market, right? Well, big money moves when hedge funds, when hedge funds and mutual funds and the government, when the government, when the government issues a two point three trillion dollar stimulus package. Those are the things that move the market. Follow the money. What do you mean by follow the money, Prince? Think about it. When we see the 13 F's, we won't know what companies are doing right now until August. What does that mean? January, February and March. January, February and March is the first quarter. We didn't see what hedge funds were doing until May, January, February, March, 45 days after the quarter, we get the 13F report. We get the 13F report. That tells us what the company did in the first quarter. Great. That was January, February, March. What are companies going to do in April, May, June? What are companies doing in the second quarter, April, May, or June? We won't figure out until 45 days after the end of the quarter, which is about August. 
We won't know what companies are really doing right now until August. Why is that important, Prince? Right now, you can have big money flowing into the market and you not know about it. The only time you hear about a big company doing something, unless they own 10% or more of the company, right? And some other stipulations that are there. But in most cases, you really won't know what's going on, who's pushing the company and whatnot. Then you had a Federal Reserve who's also pumping money to, you know, stimulating the economy itself. So you really don't know what's going on, what's really real, what's going on right now with the economy. Now, the downside to that is you really, it's hard to try to follow the money. How I know when money's flowing in and out the market, when I see the market rebounding, we're at 26,000 points on the Dow Jones as I'm speaking today. Our low so far has been March, I think it was March 20th when it hit 18,000. So now you've seen the market slowly roar up as people, and it doesn't make sense. You're like, wow, people are marching in the streets. We got civil unrest. We got high unemployment. We got companies that don't know when they're reopening, and yet and still the economy is still um, going up. What does that mean? That's all right, ladies and gentlemen. That means that money is flowing some type of way, way. whether money is flowing with the government, where there's money is flowing with uh, the government, big banks, whatever it is, money is flowing into the market. And we really won't be able to see who that big money is or what that big money is until August of, you know, <laughs> to see what the second quarter is doing. So the first thing is follow the money. Another reason why I tell you to follow the money, who remember the airline stocks? Remember when the airline stocks took a big beating, still taking a beating, when they all fell down, you talking about Southwest American, uh, Southwest American, Delta, you name it, the whole travel industry for obvious reasons. You know, travel bans, nobody's really traveling. Airports are like little ghost towns now. So with this sharp fall in demand and travel, guess what? All the airline stocks pretty much went on a premium sale. But I knew, I said, well, I think some companies are going to go out of business. Some, some of these airline companies are going to file for bankruptcy. I don't know. So then what happened? I can't remember the date and time. But guess what? The government stepped in and came in with the bell out. Here comes, the, here comes the Fed, comes in with a big stimulus check. They came in with a big stimulus check and stimulated the economy. When they stimulated the economy, that gave companies like Southwest Airlines, Delta, enough money to get over until September. They gave them bailout, bailout money. They also stopped paying dividends. So the company stopped paying dividends, plus it received bailout money, and now everybody's optimistic that the economy will be opening up soon. Because out of the blue, once we had the civil unrest and the country started to burn, guess what happened? Everybody kind of forgot about the pandemic that was going on. So now either this is going to lead to a whole bunch of more people getting sick or people are going to be like, hold on, wait, I'm tired of wearing this mask. And the economy starts to open up. People are starting to go back to work. Sports are talking about coming back on next month or whatever. That's going to put more people in the air, more people start to fly, all those other great things. Now, the other plus side to that is you're seeing a big intake, uh, uptick. 50% gains in, in the airline industry. In general, when you look at the ETF jets, the ETF jets has gone up 50% in the last 30 days. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it has gone from like $12 all the way up to $19 in the last 30 days due to uh, a lot of that was started off of um, the stimulus package. Then we've seen a big drop back in the airline industry from Warren Buffett, right? Once he decided to pull out of the airline industry, guess what? The whole airline industry started to drop in a major way. And I got a little scared there, but I'm going to invest into Southwest Airlines. I held on to it. And as of the day, we had a very strong day, very strong week, um, and things like that, right? So, Prince, why are you bringing up airlines? You're not talking about this. Ladies and gentlemen, why did I make an investment to airline, um, the airline industry? Because I told everybody straight up, I said, hey, listen, the government is backing the government is backing the airline industry. It is backing Southwest Airlines. It issued warranties. Something like two, don't quote me on this, but it was like something about 2.6 million shares in warranties that the federal government could buy uh, Southwest Airlines for like 36 bucks, right? That's what the government did. So now the government had a dog in the fight for Southwest Airlines to do better. It had a dog in the fight for Delta Airlines to reach over, I think it was like 24, 25 bucks. Guess what? Miraculously, both of those companies are over those prices because I was following the money. I had never had an airline stock before. Airlines are very thin profits. They wasn't the best business model, but guess what? When I noticed their backing, that's when I jumped in. That's why I said, follow the money. Ooh, wow, the government is putting money behind these kind of, uh, put behind these companies. Those are mistakes I made in 2008. 2008, 
I thought, man, it's about to get worse. 2009, it did get a little worse. The summer of 2009, it was kind of rebounding. I said, I don't believe it. 2010 came along. Man, I don't believe it. 2011 coming on. I don't know. Are we coming back? Some people were optimistic. Some people wasn't. 2012 came along. I don't know. It's still going up. We still have all this other stuff we're trying to shake out. You know, 2013 came along. They were like, oh, well, we're looking into the election. A lot of people didn't believe. I want to say at least we had the longest running bull ever, which was about 10, 11 years. And majority of people didn't believe it was a bull market until about 2016. Most people did not believe it was a bull market. Even though we was pulling out, all the numbers were going up. People didn't feel like we should have been pulling out. So guess what? They got too smart for their own good. But we're going to talk about that later. So follow the money. I say all of that. Number one, follow the money. Number two, kind of ties into number one. Pay attention to monetary policies. Pay attention to monetary policies. Prince, why are monetary policy so important? What is the government putting their money behind? Who is the government betting on? I'm not saying it's a great thing. I'm not saying that the government should take over small companies. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm looking at it and saying, hey, you know what? Let's say if, uh, let's say at your job, say if your boss loves a particular individual and you think the individual is not that well, you're like, you know, man, I don't know why my boss loves this guy, but this guy is horrible. But guess what? It doesn't matter. If the boss like him, the boss is going to find a way to promote him and make him better than what everybody else thinks he is. And you're looking at a person like, wow, how did they get to that position? You don't know why? Quit trying to make sense of things and watch who's backing him. Who is backing this person? What monetary policies are going to benefit? What did I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? It's going to go back into my second example. What did I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, about Bank of America? Who remembers Bank of America? Huh? Who remembers it? Anybody out there? Remember what I said about Bank of America. Why did I buy Bank of America? Who remembers what PPP is called? PPP, the pay the payroll protection plan. When the government issued that trillion, like $500 billion to uh, companies in stress, the government, um, when you went to go file for that PPP loan, the government was not, the, the Department of Treasury was not the governing body. The governing body was like companies like Bank of America. So I said, wait, so the government is going to give money to Bank of America to lend out to businesses in distress, and they're going to have to pay it back at 3%? Hmm. Bank of America essentially is going to make money off of nothing. Right? That's why I invested into Bank of America. Who remembers that episode? And I said, who's really, going to, uh, who's really going to benefit from the government bailout? Everybody kept saying, oh, no, Prince. Oh, no. It's not going to be this particular company because uh, it's not going to be this company or that company because of what's going on. And I told you, ladies and gentlemen, I said, hey, let's not pay attention. Let's look at the monetary policies that were passed. And the monetary policies benefited Bank of America. So you got to pay attention to monetary policy. Where is the government taking this money? Where is the federal government putting this money? So now, number one, what did I say? Follow the money. Is money coming in the market or out of the market? Is money moving in the market? Obviously, the stock market is going up. Money is moving into the market. But, Prince, that doesn't make sense. Now you have to look at monetary policy. What policies were passed? Everybody said, Prince, Bank of America, what do you mean? Bank of America hasn't done extremely well, but it has been profitable. But, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about number one, follow the money. Number two, monetary policy. Now we're going to get into steps three and four that's going to make all this make sense and to show you how to invest into an uncertain time. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to take a break right here. And when we come back, we're going to finish up and give you the following steps to show you about investing in these hard and uncertain times. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha.
you're so smart to you're dumb. That's what my dad used to always tell me. Ironically, shout out to my dad. I had a great dad, by the way. I was lucky enough. He would say, Prince, you're so smart to you're dumb. And I remember when I, my first trip to Wall Street, I met James, Uncle James, James Fortland. He said, Prince, the less you know about investing, the better. So I said, what? I don't make any sense. That's why I'm I investing. I want to make, that doesn't make sense. What are you telling me? The less I know about investing, the, the better. Now, before the break, we talked about two things. We talked about following the money, and we also talked about monetary policies. Now, let's get into number three. Don't be, don't outsmart yourself, or don't be too smart. What does that mean, Prince? Sometimes we look at all the things in our face, and we say, man, this doesn't make sense. You know, this doesn't make sense. We like, we're looking at unemployment. We're looking at, man, people are unemployed. Also, companies are filing for bankruptcy. Stores are not all the way back open. We got civil unrest, followed by a pandemic, followed by a presidential election, followed by people are sitting at home. Nobody even knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So guess what we do? We put our money on the sideline. You're so smart to so sometimes you're dumb. What do you mean by that, Prince? Sometimes with what you know, you know so much, but you can't process anything. Your vision becomes so clouded to where you can't even do the simple things. For prime example, I was on the phone with a, a, a buddy the other day. He said, Prince, I remember in 20, I think it was probably like 2016 or 17, all I did was uh, told him to purchase the SPY. He purchased the SPY for 200 bucks. He said, Prince, I'm up over 100% on that today because the SPY is like, I don't know, uh, I think he brought it for like 150 bucks and now it's over 300 bucks, something like that. I know he was up 100%. And he said, Prince, uh, I brought it and I forgot about it. But in the meanwhile, I've been trading a lot of stocks and I've been trading a lot of uh, I've been trading a lot of stocks. I've been trading a lot of mutual funds. I've been doing all this other stuff. And he said, you know what? Knowing what I know now, I should just put my money into the SPY. Because in the meanwhile, yes, I made a lot of money through option trading, but I also lost more than I made option trading. So and I was day trading. And when I was day trading, I lost so much more money. So what I could have done if. I didn't try to be this smart and try to outsmart the market. I could have just made double my money had I just put it, in, you know, just put majority to my money into the SPY. So guess what? That's what a person who don't know that much, they would just go in, purchase the index, forget about it. Sometimes you get in your own way. You're so smart to get dumb. So you can't even think about doing the simple things about, hey, dollar cost averaging. How about I put a little money in every month? I know the economy ain't perfect. I know the economy will never be perfect. Uh, Political will never be perfect. Monetarily will never be perfect. But you never forget about the long-term goal. So number three, don't try to be so smart. Don't try to be too smart. Understand where you're going. And it ties into number four. Number four, the bull always wins. We always know the bull market will always dominate the market in the long run. We know this. We know the bull will win. We know there will be down, down times when the bear market comes in. The bear market is a down economy. It's going to come in. But guess what? The bull market over the long term will win. That's what you have to think about, ladies and gentlemen. The bull market will win over the long term, not the bear. So when you're going around looking for the bear, hating on the bear, and think about it, our minds are already negative. So we're wondering and we're looking for negative things to happen. And once we see how oh, you turn on the TV, everything just seems to be so bad. Unemployment, cities on fire, this is going on, this is going on, that you lose long-term vision. You can't see the tree because of the forest, if I'm saying that correct. But you guys and girls, what I'm saying, understanding in the long run, the U.S. economy and businesses will win. So number one, what did we say? We follow the money. Number two, we, what do we say? We follow monetary policies. Number three, don't be too smart. Number four, the bull would always win. Number five, build that hit list, that target list. What's on your hit list, target list, or sometimes simple as watch list? Are you building your watch, watch list? If the economy was to fall through the floor tomorrow, what companies will you pull the trigger on? What companies are you currently watching right now? Are there any companies you're really watching right now? So the reason why is right now you're peeling through finances. You're seeing the good companies. Who's, ooh, wow, I like that cybersecurity company. Ooh, wow, I like 
Facebook. Ooh, I like this. I like this company. Ooh, I want to get some Google. I want to get Apple. I want to get whatever you want to do. You build it and you put it over to the left and you put it over to the side, right? And you slowly are investing. If the downturn does happen, you buy even more, but you never stop investing because you understand this is a long-term, long-run game. That's what I want you guys and girls to think about, right? Because when you look at a business, when you're looking at business, we're looking for the long term. These uncertain times, the only thing you can do is have dollar cost average. If you're a long term investor, don't even look at what's happening today. Stick to your guns, stick to your plans. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? When it's a bear market, what creates a bear market? Fear. Why won't you invest today? Because of fear. Notice nobody is saying if the market will return. Nobody's using if. Everybody's thinking about when. The Dow Jones is at 26,000 26, as of the day of, of this recording. The all-time high was 29,500. Nobody's questioning that, uh, that we're going to hit 30,000. Nobody's questioning that. The question is when. So if you invested today, the market went back down to 18,000, guess what? You know you're going to cross over 30,000 in the future, which is money for you, what you're making, ladies and gentlemen. So don't try to be too smart. Follow the money. Why is the market continuously going up? I don't know who's doing it. It's a, it's, a, it's a stock market rig. You bet your bottom dollar it is. Anywhere there's money, there's some type of manipulation. So guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Follow the money. Follow the monetary policy. Don't try to be too smart. Also, know the bull will always win. What's on your hit list? What are you going to hit? What's on your target list? Why is it on your target list? Right? And spread yourself out. Don't put the same companies on your list. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. The reason why I'm guilty, I have Microsoft and I have Apple. And they're brothers and sisters. They're right in the same industry, but it's just something about it. I just got to have both. I should actually invest in the one. I'm over, uh, I'm over investing into the technology field because of Microsoft and Apple. One of the simplest things you can do, you can buy the MAGA. Not make America great again. We're talking about MAGA, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon. Those are the top $4 trillion companies that used to be. They should be right now or in, the, in the economy. You buy those companies. When the hard times come, the little companies are probably going to disappear, but not the big companies. So you're staying on topic. You're staying right on code. You're not realizing. You're not pandering what's happening today. You remember, follow the money. Follow monetary policy. Don't be too smart. No, the bull market will always win in the long run. The market will go up in the long run. Yes, we're going to have a presidential election. No, this is not going to be the last riot, uh, riots and cities on fire. It's going to happen again. Also, uh, for the next time, uh, why is it going to happen? Who knows? But history has taught that has happened. This is not the first time. What will happen again? Also, what's on your hit list? And look at opportunity costs. How much is it costing you by putting your money on the sideline? Did you miss that bull that just ran up? Did you miss the bull that just ran up because you was waiting for the perfect time? There's never a perfect time, right? So right now, there are time, uncertain times. And these uncertain times, what do you do? Follow the money. Follow the money policies. Don't try to outsmart the market. Know the bull market would always win. Stay loyal to your hit list. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be my time for today. My name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investment. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.